the last talk of this session uh, will be Asumu Takakawa talking about his work uh, with a number of other people on the new generics library. So the first thing that might be on your mind is what are generics and what do we mean by generic programming? So I'll show you some examples to illustrate what I mean. Um, so in Racket we have lots of functions like hashref, hashset, uh, asoc, uh, alist, cons that do similar things, uh, that is use map-like operations on different kinds of data structures. So in this case a hash table and an association list. Similarly we have uh, operations like listref or vectorref, append and so on that work on different sequence-like data structures. Um, but again, we have different functions for all of these data types. And of course, we have a bunch of equality predicates tailored to particular data types, like equal on numbers, string equal on, uh, on strings, and so on. Um, but it turns out that we have other functions we can use instead, uh, dictionary functions, for example, that don't care uh, which kind of uh, dictionary you're using. Uh, sequence operations that uh, are generic over different kinds of sequences, and of course there's equal harm uh, for equality on any kind of data type. Uh, so these are really convenient because as lazy racketeers, uh, we don't want to bother thinking about what data type we're using. But the problem is that these are all built in, and you might wonder, can I build my own generic functions uh, that don't care about what kind of data types they operate on? So can you make your own? Uh, and the answer is, uh, of course. Uh, because this is Racket, and uh, we just build it as a library in Racket. So you just require Racket generic, uh, and it works out. So uh, I'll show you a demo of how you can use this. Uh, so first of all, you want to require Racket generic to get the library. And uh, let's say that we're defining a simple generic interface for sets. Um, so what we do is we start out with defining um, an interface with the defined generics form. And we'll give it a name, so uh, the set interface. And then you specify the methods that this interface should contain. So in this case, uh, let's have a method for adding an element to a set, uh, and a method for uh, checking if an element is contained in a set. And finally, uh, let's see if uh, a set is, a given set is empty. So like that, we've defined an interface. Um, and we can go ahead and run this. And this will define um, these generic functions for us. Uh, and it also defines a predicate to check whether it's a set, for example. Uh, but we, we don't actually have any sets yet. We just have an interface for them. So to build um, a set, you can, you can use the struct uh, form to build a new data type. We'll say um, it's, a, uh, it's a my set struct. And we'll just implement it with a hash table. Um, and now we have to provide methods that actually implement this, uh, this interface. So we'll start out with um, set add. Um, and for that, uh, first of all, we have to produce a new set. So we'll call the constructor. And we'll provide a new, uh, a new hash table to put inside the set. So we'll say hash set. Uh, and then we have to take the old hash out and uh, add the element to it. Uh, actually, uh, we use the element as the key and just put in true to say it's in the set. All right. Uh, we can implement the set contains ha method, uh, which is also pretty simple. Just it's hash ref of the hash. And we look up the element, and the failure case is just false. And can define set empty. And that's just, uh, we check if the keys of the, of the hash is empty. And that's all of our methods. So what we can do is define, um, define an empty uh, set Oops. to be my set of an empty hash. Oops, there's an error. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, so when you define the methods, you have to specify what generic interface you're implementing. Uh, all these generic interfaces generate a gen base name. Hmm? Oh, sorry. 
I meant set. So gen set, yes. Uh, and that should run. OK, that's good. So now we can say um, add 5 to the empty set. And uh, let's check if the resulting set contains 5. Whoops, sorry, it was not what I meant to do. And true, okay, so that's good. Um, and of course we can say, uh, is the empty set empty? Yes, okay, so that's good. Um, but generics give us more features, for example, um, we can, we can actually write contracts uh, for these generics to, to check certain properties that we want. So um, we can write down a, uh, let's see. Right. Uh, we can say we want sets of integers, and we'll define this contract in set C. And we define that using, first of all, a recursive contract. Uh, we'll see why in a sec. Um, each generic interface defines its own contract combinator. Uh, this one's set C. And then set C takes um, a series of contracts, one for each of the methods. And so we'll say set add is a function that takes, uh, it takes an element, so we'll say an integer. And uh, this is where we use this recursive contract. We'll, it takes an inset and, and finally produces a new inset. Hmm? It is named, yep. Uh, and then set contains. Again, takes an integer, takes an inset, and produces uh, any, because it's just a boolean. And let's see, uh, set empty ha huh? takes a set and returns any. All right, so now we've defined a contract. Uh, let's, let's use the contract uh, to say, so we have some set. We'll say that it implements uh, inset C. Um, and we'll define that as, uh, I don't know, the empty set, right? That should go through. So we have this thing, it's a contracted set. So if we try to say set add of a string to this set, we should get a contract error, and we do. Uh, it's kind of a big contract error, um, but it tells you exactly which method failed. Um, and of course, if we add something that passes the contract, we're fine. OK. Uh, so that's nice. Um, so so far, all of the, uh, the, the only set implementation I've shown you is a struct, um, a data type you have to find yourself. But you might also want to be able to use uh, primitive data types that are built into the language as, say, sets, right? Um, but there's a problem. They're not structs. So where do you put the methods? So. Uh, recently, uh, Claire Alvis implemented a new feature which lets you do this. Um, you can specify a defaults method list here. And in the defaults list, uh, let's see, so you can say that for a list, uh, we'll implement the methods like this. We'll say set add is just cons. Uh, sorry, there's an extra parenthesis there. Uh, set add is cons. Set contains is member. Set empty is empty. And that should be good. Uh, it does not match the expected number of arguments. I think I put too many parentheses somewhere. Too many parens around the list, huh? Uh, yes, yes. Right, there we go. Uh, OK, so now we can go back to uh, this example and replace the empty set with a list. And it works. So like this, you can implement um, a generic interface for any built-in data type. Just add them there. Uh, you, can do diff you can do arbitrary dispatch by putting more predicates in this list. So you can say, you can say list, and you can say uh, also um, it should look. Oh, it's not working. Blah, sorry. Uh, so take a list and make sure it's not empty. Like that. So now this only works on non-empty lists. Not that you'd really want that. Uh, but you can do arbitrary dispatch there. 
Um, and so you can have your interfaces work over a variety of data types. Um, OK, so that's the end of the demo. So generics are now available in the latest version of Racket, version 5.3. And uh, all the code I showed you in this talk, uh, you can find on this gist on GitHub. And uh, this is joint work by a number of people, Ellie Bartley, Jay McCarthy, Vincent Sedemore, Clara Alvis, and myself. Thanks.